Hello everybody, you are listening to Alfredonian Education and Chivalry. I'm your host, Alfred. Alfredonian Education and Chivalry is brought to you by the company Alfred & Friends. To find out more about how you can invest in any one of the subsidiary companies of Alfred & Friends, simply go to alfredandfriends.com. There is something there for everybody. The title of today's broadcast is Learn how to express a range of emotions from extreme happiness to extreme anger in a polite, cool, and sophisticated way. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 2 using the King James Version of the Bible. I read, A soft answer turneth away rot, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. That is very powerful. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Your tongue may have knowledge, but you may not know how to use it aright. There are a lot of people who know the truth, but they do not say the truth in the right way. You know, it is not enough to have knowledge. You have to know how to communicate that knowledge in different circumstances and instances. Otherwise, you could end up getting killed in spite of your knowledge. There are a lot of smart people who say intelligent things at the wrong time or in the wrong way. And it might as well be that they did not know anything. It might as well be as their head, as though their heads are empty because they are still fools. According to the Bible, you see, the tongue of the wise, use that knowledge aright. That means if you do not use knowledge properly, you are a fool. And this is very important. A soft answer turn it away rats, and grievous words stir up anger. So you should know how to communicate. There are a lot of times you will find yourself in different situations when you communicate with others. There are some situations that no matter how truthful what you are saying is, the more you talk, the more you are condemned. In that situation, you know, your strategy has to change. Because the person believes that you are a liar. So no matter what you are saying, the circumstances have been orchestrated against you. So even though you are telling the truth, in some cases you can be pouring out facts and giving out statistics. And the more you are talking the more you are looking like a liar because of how certain situations have been presented and has been built, built up. And you have to consider the person you are talking to. Some people may not respond to facts. Some people may not respond to statistics. Some people may not re respond to the truth. One of the beautiful things I have observed, you know, in different phases of communication and different times in history you know when you look at for example certain old movies like some movies made in the 30s when i i look at some charlie chan movies you know especially like the one featuring um cesar romero you know and there's other episodes you know other um, Charlie Chan movies, you know, those kind of movies that were, that were set in those era where, you know, sophistication was very important. The era of the teachings of, you know, etiquette, you know, that era of sophistication and class, you know, when things like that were very important. And keep in mind, that it is still important at least to us today because of the benefits the benefits do not change you know and that is what afrodonian etiquette and chivalry is about you know we practice etiquette and chivalry but we practice it via the word of god it is purified by the word of god and by truth you know we take out the things that did not work in previous you would say installments of etiquette and chivalry, the different times in human history that, you know, etiquette and chivalry, as it relates to sophistication and proper conduct, you know, as it relates to best society, the times that it was 
really excelling what made it actually decline you know what made people to be against it so we censor out those things we find out what those things are and we actually purify the whole thing with the word of god because it is very important and one of the things i notice in such old movies is that there are certain characters that have a way of staying calm and communicating a range of emotions you can see a clue of that in the old james bond movies no matter what happens james bond stays cool and calm you know james bond could be kidnapped and he's in a situation where he's about to be sunned into and he's cool and calm and trying to he's saying witty things and even trying to negotiate himself out of that situation and planning how do i get out of this situation but he's staying cool and calm you know you have to understand that there is a sophistication and class and advantage that comes with that ability of being cool calm and polite and being able to express a range of emotions from extreme happiness to extreme anger there are certain times that somebody may insult you they are with you they are sitting across the table from you and they insult you now if you keep quiet and let it go there are many disadvantages to that because you have put yourself in a certain situation let's say that you are at a dinner and somebody passes a smirk remark a, a, a remark at you that is you know cleverly crafted but it's a straight diss at you now if you let it slide you have given that person the upper hand in that relationship you have put your, your yourself beneath that person and subject to that person in the way that you have conducted yourself and structured how people who witnessed it would see you you know it is just like for example if people respect you let's say people respect you are mr a let's say people respect mr a people do not respect mr b you know and then people see mr b put down mr a and mr a is okay with it guess what the respect level that people had for mr a will now decline you know this is psychology and how people think it is just like head mentality when it comes to packs you know if the leader is attacked and the leader is defeated it is assumed that whoever defeated the leader is stronger than all the people in the pack even though that may not be so there's a change of the power dynamics so it is to your disadvantage to keep quiet and there are also disadvantages that may rise from you ex expressing extreme anger let's say you insult the person directly or let's say you stand up from the table or you fling something at the table because of the insult that you have been insulted now you are making yourself look a certain way so by extreme anger you know if, if you keep quiet you look like a punk if you express yourself in extreme anger that may be fitting to you you may think of it as fitting but it will make you look like a crazy person and it make you look unsuitable and make you look bad there are a lot of people who find themselves in this situation and it's you see it repeats itself a lot of times in relationship between men and women a woman may shout and insult a man she might even throw things at a man but if a man responds in that same way it now makes him look bad if a man now starts shouting at a woman it is ah it is one of those men that shouts at woman that at women if the man now throws things at the woman in spite of the fact that the woman may be throwing frying pan may be throwing sharp object knives and all of that if he does that he has ruined his reputation forever he's a woman better he's a man that threw this at at his at his wife or at the uh, the woman you know that he was not even married to so all those kinds of things that may be an equal response he's responding equally to what she's doing to him but that is not the wise way to communicate it now if he continues and you know he allows her to keep throwing things about at him he puts himself in that relationship as a submissive as somebody who she will always shout at she will always take advantage of she will always throw things up at him so he knows that he cannot just keep quiet and fold his arms when she's acting that way 
But also, if he acts in an equal manner, he will look bad. So there is now has to be intelligence. How does he react? That will be fitting. That will either calm him, calm her down, or navigate that situation successfully. And that is where wisdom comes in. And that is where it is important for you to understand how to express a range of emotions while staying cool. A man who, in that situation, knows how to cook up a response that he stays cool and stays calm, but expresses enough anger and agitation and enough you know, seriousness of stop that, that prevents her from further throwing things at him or further talking down at him and all of that. Because a lot of wives like to talk down at their husbands. Then when the husband now begins to do what she's doing, it, he looks a million times worse than her. You know, so you have to know how to respond to that situation in a way that you are cool and calm. But you, you, sh you should be able to express enough anger that will bring forward the same results as though you responded equally or even on a higher plane. And that is where wisdom comes in. And when you look at a lot of these old movies, because of the fact that a lot of times, you know, um, culture seeps into entertainment and entertainment influences culture, you know, they influence each other. Because of the influence of etiquette and chivalry during those days, when you see some of these Charlie Chan movies, you will see people who are cool and calm, but express a range of emotions. You know, some people don't know how to express extreme anger or extreme happiness in a calm way. And when you see a lot of these old movies, you can see that. You know, you don't see it in new movies. In new movies, if someone is angry, they have to throw things, they have to tear things down. But somebody can express even much more anger by just sitting down. You know, think about a movie like The Godfather. The Godfather threatens people without even talking. How does he do it? How does he express that level of, you know, fear? You know, somebody may shout and take a gun and take a knife and say, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, blah, blah, blah. They express that level. But with the Godfather, he just calmly sits down without even talking. He has communicated that fear. He has communicated that seriousness of your life is in very serious danger if you do not turn around and do things this other way by just keeping quiet. So this is a communication skill that needs to be learned. You need to understand these things about communication. It's very important, you know. So it is very, very important. There are women, for example, who they are in a situation, you know, they do not understand the dynamics of relationships and communications. And this is why a lot of women end up getting raped or end up getting in situations where, you know, it is very unfortunate for them. A man invites a woman to his apartment. He's insi he insists, but because she has that nature of she does not want to disappoint. You know, there are a lot of women that are timid, you know, the, when, when people press, for example, let's say other people have uh, there and the pressure, uh, you know, the peer pressure is there. Uh, go, don't worry, don't go, you know. Um, what is there? He's inviting you over to his place, blah, 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 blah. She wants to say no, but she doesn't know how to communicate it or whatever. She does not want to offend or she does not want to, you know, make the person feel bad or she does not want to lose relationship. You should know how to communicate things in a way that you can still, if you want to maintain that relationship, still maintain it and still reject the offer. You see, when you look at certain, even old etiquette um, movies, there are certain documentaries on etiquette and communication, you know, where people, you know, it was built to teach people, you know, um, certain things about 
good manners, communication, and all of that, you know. And you could see some of it on the web. I, a lot of it has been taken down because these are um, videos that were made in the 50s, you know, 50s or 40s, you know. And I believe the U.S. military was involved in the making of those movies. But in any case, it showed something about communication, you know, in where a guy was asking a lady out, but she just calmly maintaining the relationship, you know, without making him feel bad. She still communicated, I want nothing to do with you. There are polite ways to say things. You know, you can say the most mean things in a polite way. And this is an important skill that you should learn. So you will know how to stay cool and sophisticated and express any range of emotions as it is necessary. Because a lot of times when your expression of extreme anger or anger or happiness is too physical or it goes in a different way, it affects your perception and it destroys other things about yourself that you are building, about your image, as it relates to the people who are interacting with you or are watching you, you know, which is very, very unfortunate. It shouldn't be that way. You know, let's say a woman is in a conversation, you know, with a guy and she wants that conversation to end. There are so many ways to politely say you have to leave, you know, and you have to not be afraid and understand that politeness is very powerful. When you watch a lot of these old movies, you will see very beautiful crafted insults. You can craft an insult with so much beauty and poetry. I'm, and I'm very serious. There are many ways you can even call somebody a rapist in the kindest way possible. You know, not by insinuations, but by crafting the words in a straight, direct manner. Let us say that um, a, a woman um, is invited to um, over to a guy's house and, you know, she's trying to, you know, you know he's in the process of, you know, um, pushing her, pressing her. There are many ways that she can, there are many comments, you know, that she can make that are clever and are respectful, but explain that is not proper. And you can see a lot of those kinds of communications in old movies. You don't see that kind of communications in new movies. You know, a, a, a polite way of saying it is like she telling him, you are far too much of a gentleman or you come from far too respectable a family to, uh, to expect a girl or to put a girl in that situation, I'm sure. They are very polite ways. You have crafted it in a way that you have praised the person for being a gentleman. And then you have attached to it that this is not how gentlemen behave. So you did not insult the person, but you insulted them. You see, you put it carefully. You, you know, you are far too much of a gentleman to ask a lady to be alone with you in your house or by herself. You know, when you say things like that, you know, only a complete idiot will respond to that in a way that they still push forward with asking you. Because now by pushing forward, they are now saying they are not a gentleman and their intentions are not honorable. They are now, it has now turned into something else. So now you can also respond to that there. But my point is that this is a very important skill that will save your life for a lot of you. And it will certainly improve everyone's life who learns it. Learn how to say things in clever ways. Remember what the Bible says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools spread out foolishness. Some people say they, 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 what they say is true. What they say is, 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 is accurate. But the timing, the way they say it, is the problem. And it will create problems, serious problems. So don't be that way. Be wise. Learn 
how to communicate any range of emotions. You do not have to show extreme anger to ext in, in the sense of physical actions for you to communicate it. You know, you do not have to also show extreme, any range of extreme emotions. Learn how to be cool, calm and collected. You know, James Bond is, you know, just and communicate what you want to communicate. And you can see a lot of Venice in those kinds of movies where they stay calm. It is not like Venice in modern movies of today where they are always angry. You can see a villain who is planning on killing somebody. He's talking calmly to the person he's about to kill. You know, that, um, and explaining a few things with coolness and calmness. But he has already made um, preparations and is about to kill that person. He stays cool and calm. You know, it is a thing that has to do with communication. And people like that, they put themselves in a situation where they can navigate difficult situations easier. And people like that will obviously not be suspected for things like um, murder and all of that. You know, they will not be easily suspected, you know, when it comes to examining their character. So you have to learn those things. Because you are going to find yourself a lot of times in life in difficult situations where how you communicate, you know, changes things. Let us open our Bibles to the book of First Samuel chapter 25. I'm reading from verse 18 to 34. Using the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible, I read. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves, two wines of two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five measures of pasture grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and laid them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, Go on before me. See wisdom, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. As she rode on her donkey, she came down hidden by the mountains. And behold, David and his men came down opposite her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that belonged to him. And he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so, and more also, to David, if I live of all who belong to him, one male alive by morning. You see what is in David's mind. David has come to kill this guy and everybody in his house because he has been wronged. You know, the guy has done something very wicked to him, but you can see what the wife did. The wife, first of all, sent gifts ahead of time, you know, and then she came later. Now, let us continue from verse 23. Then Abigail saw David. When Abigail saw David, she hastened and lied lighted off the donkey and fell before David on her face and did obeisance. Kneeling at his feet, she said, watch this, kneeling at his feet, look at her push, that is where she was. She did not stand and talk to him. Kneeling at his feet, she said, upon me alone, let this guilt be my Lord. See wisdom. She has taken all the focus and blame off her, her, her husband. Her husband who did not even apologize or have plans of apologizing. Let's, you see, upon me alone, let this guilt be, my Lord. And let your handmaid, I pray you, speak in your presence and hear the words of, my, of your handmaid. You see, she's calling herself his handmaid, basically like a servant, you know. And he said, please, just hear my words. Let not my Lord, I pray you. You know, she's calling him Lord. Let not my Lord pray you. I pray you. Regard this foolish and wicked fellow, Nabal. That is her husband. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal, foolish, wicked, is his name. And folly is with him. But I, your handmaid, did not see my Lord's young men whom you sent. So now, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, seeing that the Lord has prevented you from blood guilt, 
craftiness and from avenging yourself with your own hand. Now let your enemies and those who seek to do evil to my Lord be as neighbor. And now this gift which your handmaid has brought my Lord, let it be given to the young men whom, who follow my Lord. Forgive, I pray you, the trespass of your handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a show house, because the Lord is fighting the Lord's battles, and evil has not been found in you all your days. This is what she's saying about him. Evil has not been found in you all your days. So she's basically calling David perfect. That is wisdom. Though man is risen up to pursue you and to seek your life, yet the life of my Lord shall be bound in the living bundle with the Lord your God. And the lives of your enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the center of his sling. And when the Lord has done to my Lord, according to all the good that he has promised concerning you and has made you ruler over Israel, this shall be no staggering grief to you or cause for pangs of conscience to my Lord. Either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord had avenged himself. And when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then earnestly remember your handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. Listen to this. And blessed be your discretion and advice. And blessed be you who have kept me today from blood guiltiness and from avenging myself with my own hand. For as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who has prevented me from hurting you, if you had not hurried and come to meet me, surely by morning there would not have been left so much as one meal to Nabal. You see that? He was going to kill all the men in this man's house. But because of this woman's wisdom, her words, her response, because of her communication, all those lives were saved. You know, do you know there are a lot of wars that were started because of poor communication? There are a lot of wars that could have ended because of proper communication. Millions of people, millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people have died throughout history because of poor communication from one king to another, or from one leader to another, or from one individual to another. You know, you may be in the right, but it is not enough, you know, to be in the right. It is not always about standing for your rights. It is about wisdom and acting rightly, doing the best thing that peace will reign. And at the end of the day, God will have the victory. And you will still get what you want. And perhaps the other side will still get some advantages out of it. There is something very important that you have to learn. You know, so this is a thing that comes with wisdom. And wisdom comes from God. You have to ask God for wisdom, you know, and Christ has been made unto us wisdom. So you need to study the Bible, read the Bible. You need to fall in love with knowledge. You know, as the Bible says, son to wisdom, you know, you are my sister, you know, and, you know, unto knowledge. You, ha you have to go after these things, get wisdom, get understanding, you know, it's very important. Be a lover of knowledge. And when this happens, you become very crafty with your communication. There is no kind of communication that you cannot pass across. There are a lot of people who are dead today because they say the wrong things to policemen. When you see a cop, how do you communicate? You know, a lot of people who end up in altercations with the with policemen, the communication was wrong. You cannot be aggressive and be insultive to a police officer and think that things will work out well. He's a human being with emotions that can be manipulated. He's a human being in a position of power who also has an ego. Wise communication will get you out of a lot of situations. There are people who people came to kill them and they communicated, they talked to the person who came to kill them and the person changed their minds. There are people who people have come to kidnap them. They met, they talked to the person and explained to the person that, you see, at the end of the day, it's money you want. Why don't I just pay you the money now? But in addition to that, you have to tell me who sent you. 
you know. So they did not go through the stress of being taken to a far place and all of that. There are people who have actually even given jobs to the people who came to kidnap them. But yeah, there are some people who have been kidnapped. I'm just talking to you about communication. You know, there, there was actually um, a senator who was met by an assassin. And he told the assassin that he has cancer and that he's about to die. That he's glad he has been worried, you know, about how he's going to leave his estates. That now, if he gets killed, the insurance company would have to pay the insurance, you know, the coverage for his family. But the way his insurance is set off, you know, the amount that is going to be left for his family is not going to be as much as if he gets killed. You know, he, he cleverly crafted it. And this um, kinds of communication depends on your understanding of who you are talking to. He knew that this person really, really hated him. This assassin really, really hated him. So he showed him that, well, I will suffer more if I am alive than if I am dead. And the unintelligent, you know, assassin whose mind was co consumed with hate went with the hate, you know, it is more advantageous for this guy to be alive than for me to kill him. If I kill him, I'll be actually be giving money to his family and giving him what he wants. Besides, this guy is going to die very soon. So what is the point? And he left him and the guy, you know, the assassin later got arrested and put in jail. So this is actually a true story. You know, there are people who have negotiated their way out of so many kinds of situations. And people who have negotiated their way into different kinds of situations. But you have to understand how to communicate with wisdom. How to communicate wisely. This is something that is very, very important. And when you do that, you see, you would see the kind of blessings and the kind of life that you would live. Your life would be completely different. You'll be lifted up. You know, you live your life in a different way. You would see the wonders and the amazingness of God all through your life. That being said, if you are listening to this broadcast and you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, I would like you to go to alfredandfriends.com and click on the salvation prayer link in the main menu. When you do that, a page you come and that has the prayer of salvation. I'd like you to pray that prayer and give your life to Jesus Christ. So that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you.